Yeah, let's visit the docks down here and see what trouble we can get into. Not just some uh, side questing stuff. I'm going to investigate a few things. So we've got to clear up the streets of uh, the docks version of a gang. These guys, um, if I remember right, their home base, their boss, is, is pretty nasty. Um, I don't know if you would say he's as nasty as the, uh, the Hightown gang boss, but um, pretty bad. I noticed Stealth basically sheds all the hate and diverts it to someone else, right? And that's a uh, that's a mechanic you can use uh, really in any of the Dragon Age games. It's going into Stealth and diverting enemies who are concentrated on you back to where they're supposed to be. In case your tank is too far away or not doing his or her job, you can kind of uh, say, hey, forget about me for a second. Go bother somebody else. You hope they don't divert straight to your mage, though. That's not going to help any. You'd like to help. We'll say one thing about Dragon Age 2 is they did make the mages uh, kind of tanky, in a way. Seem to have some survivability. Usually lasts long enough for you to get over there and get them out of a pinch. Anyway. All right now, this is uh, another section of Sebastian's. Side quest, we're supposed to go find all these Flint mercenaries who were hired to finish him off so they can, I guess, end the royal line there from Starkhaven, where he comes from. I don't remember how many sets of these guys we have to find, but uh, they're worth a couple hundred XP apiece. I'm cool with that. Definitely cool with that. This is bonus XP. Normally, I don't play the DLCs along with just a regular playthrough. I like to build my character with the base stuff, but... Uh, for the sake of the video, for you guys, and, and for myself, just to check it out, I'm, uh, I'm throwing in some of this stuff. If you remember when we got to Gamlin's house, those statues were set up so we could do the legacy and the Mark of the Assassin and stuff. Um, one viewer, he suggested doing legacy in Act 2 and waiting for Mark of Assassin until Act 3. And that it makes more sense and stuff, and I was like, well, that's cool. More than happy to take a suggestion there. I'm, I'm totally, um blind on the Mark of the Assassin. Uh, by the time that came out, I was essentially done with this. A lot of times, uh, a release like this, I'll get into it really, really hardcore and sink all my time into it and uh, essentially be done with it before the first DLC hits, but I'll, I'll already have, you know, several hundred thousand hours or whatever into it, you know, something ridiculous. So, um, that was definitely the case with this. I played the crap out of this. I really, really did. I, I do recall playing Legacy, running through that once. Um, never Mark of the Assassin, I didn't play that one. And I'm fixing to get smacked by that. I don't think I took too much damage, but uh, I guess if you get out of the center of it, you just get knocked down instead of actually getting one-shotted by it. Oh, look at this guy, Alchemist. Um, they introduced Alchemist in Inquisition. I think it's like one of the specialist trees, or um, it's a class you play in multiplayer, right? But it's a rogue. It's a rogue-based type deal. Although it could be a magic type ability. At least that's what they're considering it. I mean, here you have a mage, and so they incorporate it into a rogue as, uh, as opposed to using powers of the phage, you're using um, um, more scientific means to produce magical effects to control the elements and what have you, you know, ice and fire and lightning and whatever. Where'd he go? Guess my mages all had that trick. Disappear and reappear. It's almost like a backstab. I'm hoping we will see some things as we play along here in hindsight. Um having played Inquisition, that will uh, bring some clarity to some stuff, or, you know, maybe a few wow moments, like, oh, holy crap, I don't remember her saying that. That's amazing. <laughs> you are right. Want the best? Take it from the worst. Then sell to specialists like you. Always willing to give a discount to the people who saved my skin. Flemeth has already hinted to some things, and uh, I think we see her one more time. And then other comments that other characters may make that uh, 
will have a whole new meaning in light of, you know, seeing, having seen some future events. Now we can look back and say, oh my gosh, so, so that's what that means, or that's what she was referring to, or wow, she said a lot, but I didn't even catch it when she first said it because it really had no, no clarity. But then, uh, later on, when you see what the re reference is to, you go back and you go, oh my gosh, they were talking about this way back when. Nobody knew it. It's really cool. Okay, now this is, uh, I'm trying to remember where all the dream items, I call them dream items, is there, you know, as opposed to like 50 silver or gold, these are the items that cost 4 gold, 9 gold, 20 gold, 50 gold, or whatever. I think there's even a staff in the game somewhere that costs uh, somewhere between 80 and 100 or something. It's it's ridiculous. But um, there's certain items in each act um, if you return to all the merchants. And once again, like I say, is visit each area in the day and nighttime sometimes several times like we'll return to the docks several times for quests and stuff and you know i'd like to follow out this will be uh a, a, a more complete run i'm not gonna say completionist but uh it's not exactly linear but one thing does naturally lead to the next like you'll notice we'll enter one area to finish off one thing and pick up another quest along the way and find some other item to go deliver in a third area over here and stuff like that so it's all here and it's not mandatory to do all of it by any means, but um, there are certain things that we need to do to naturally progress the story. Like, you know, we're going to get through a certain number of years here in Act 1, then we'll get through a certain amount of time in Act 2, and so on and so forth. And uh, these are, I guess, basically the events between Origins and Inquisition, essentially. Um, in fact, the events of this game in and of itself are a key factor in um, what happens in Inquisition. Pretty much when everything comes to a head, boils over, and just blows up. So, uh... But, uh, anyway. So, to naturally progress the story, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna, of course, have to do certain things. So, in that sense, I guess, I guess linear-ish. They disguise it well, though. Because, you know, you have your freedom to roam around. And even with the limited map areas, you know, um... Kind of copy and pasting. You, you know, you, you put a different label on a, like a mansion. You go to investigate a mansion and, you know, go kill all the baddies or something. Like, you know, the the Amel family estate, there may be another version of a mansion that looks exactly like it, but it's called something else. And so, yeah, they copy and paste the map and stuff like that. That's been a criticism. It doesn't really bother me. I'm into the story um, and exploring the areas that they do give me and doing the stuff that they give me um, to do in those areas. I mean, it's 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 not a problem with me, but uh, I, guess I can see some people who are really into the whole open world Skyrim thing or whatever. Maybe being a little disappointed in that, but, uh, you know, newsflash, this isn't Skyrim. <laughs> you know, this isn't that game. Um, Origins wasn't a whole lot different. They had, you know, more different maps, I guess you could say. Had a lot longer time in development, but it was still uh, relatively linear. A lot of invisible walls, essentially a narrow path that you could walk in. You may be able to see off of the di in the distance, but you couldn't go there, you know, type of thing. Um, of course, they changed all that up in Inquisition and, and leaned towards much more open open world feel and whatever but they're different games I, all three of them are, are, are totally unique but the same same story same type of storytelling same type of dialogue and companionship with all your party members all that stuff is there you know just the combat's a little different the exploration's a little different art uh the art i would say is, is different in each one different style this honestly is one of my favorites right here on dragon age 2 as beautiful as inquisition is i like the art style and i really like the animations the combat looks cool as well as just being really really fun i think uh the animations are neat you know you're, you're I mean, you actually look like you're kicking ass seriously inquisition had that too i'm not taking away from it but uh origins not so much it was pretty much a uh, a set animation for a lot of things and uh sometimes if you'd attack an enemy your character would actually run a, a pre-designed route to get to that enemy and then raise its hand and drop it kind of in the old 8-bit fashion. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. And it was, it was lovable in and of itself. It was different, you know. It was different. Now, there's a couple reasons I'm coming down here. I'm hoping sometimes the earlier you go into a particular area, um... When you come back later, that area may respawn some enemies, and you may get a chance to fight an extra mob or two, which is worth, you know, anywhere from one to, I don't know, two or three hundred XP each time. Well, that adds up over the course of time. I mean, you level relatively quickly, especially early on, right? 
And so, uh, all that counts. So I come here now. Also, I wanted to check that merchant. Um, just had a, enough money to buy that belt. Uh, essentially, my rogue... And this isn't a whole lot different from my Origins makeup either. Um, this doesn't really come come into play in Inquisition so much. But here where you set your attribute points and where you assign your points can make or break your you know your particular character build. Like if you have some skills that play off you know you having a particular attribute, Rogue really comes into play with like cunning and stuff like that. Um, then you want to be able to sink your points into cunning. You know if you can capitalize on that, then you want as much of it as possible type of thing. And then micromanage um, how many points you need for uh, equipment basics. All right. And so essentially the only thing I'm going to put any points into, and this is almost identical um, to my Origins character, just kind of reverse, is in Origins, a few points into Cunning to get some uh, some basic skills. Things like, you know, um, Persuasion, um, lock picking, and stuff like that. Okay, and everything else went into decks. Well, this is just the opposite. I'm going to put enough points into Dexterity to meet the minimum requirements for equipment. All right, and I, I think it's possible there may be an armor requirement that even requires a little bit of strength. So at some point, I may have to drop a few points into that. But I'm hoping just equipment in and of itself will help me meet all my all my equipment requirements. And then um, a few extra points into Dexterity because, uh, you know, there's certain weapons and stuff. Like, not really the case with, um, with, these, with these sickles here. Assuming I use them for the rest of the game, I don't know if I will or not. I, I really like the Dalish daggers too. I think the, I think they just look really, really cool. Um, either way, I, I had to play with these at least for a while because I, I actually went and bought the DLC specifically for for this, you know. But um, some of the weapons have a basic dexterity requirement, and I think there's a set of armor that has like a, a 20 strength. I may be wrong on that. It may just be dexterity for the rogue, but. Uh, Seems like I remember there being some strength. Anyway, so if I need to drop a point or two into that after I get all the equipment um, that I'm looking for, I want any amulet, ring, or belt that gives me plus one to my attributes. In fact, I'd rather take plus one to all attributes than say like plus three to cunning or something. Even though I, I want the cunning, um, it you know a point I don't have to spend in strength is a point I can put into cunning anyway. Right, so if I'm gonna have to meet some meet some basics for those types of things, and dexterity goes the same way, for every point I raise with my equipment, uh, that's a point I don't have to put into dexterity to meet some some weapon requirement or something like that. So either either way, it's you know it's a win win. Bottom line is is as many points into cunning as possible. Now when we're done with all the mobs here, um, the their home base is somewhere over on this side of the map. Where we just left, so we'll have to come back over. Um, if we run out of mobs, if they stop spawning for some reason, we can always go into a uh, uh, another area and come back. In fact, we could just drop right back down into that market area we just came from underground, and uh, and just pop right back out, and it'll it'll refresh in this area. Sometimes mobs will overlap each other, and you need to get rid of one, leave, and come back, and then. The one that you need to fight to finally get the note that says, Hey, go over here. This is where our super secret, um, uber hidden base is, you know. Okay, now down there... Um, those are like some ship... That that plays into something else later. I don't even think I have that active. But there, uh, there should be a mob spawning up here at some point. In fact, probably our final mob. The one where the lieutenant actually brought, drops the note and tells us where we need to go. Might as well search out any barrels and boxes and all that other nonsense. I like I like knowing that I've got an area cleared out day and night of all loot that can be found. So after that, all I essentially have to do when I return to that area is just, you know, fight who I need to fight or complete whatever quest I need to Bugger complete. Off. Yeah, those captains, um, I don't remember. You know, I think there's a lady in the Hanged Man that I need to talk to. See, a lot of things won't trigger until you've uh, uh, completed certain things. Like whatever activates this quest, um, I haven't I haven't, I haven't got to that point yet. But they'll come into play later. Matter of fact, um,
Meet Harriman in the docks by day. Okay, this is that thing for Mirren. But I still don't think it involves those two captains. I think it involves uh, someone completely different here. Okay, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we can do that. We can just come back here daytime. Easy switch. These exits are really, really convenient. And I like that day-night map setup where you can move around a lot easier. Okay, so there's one of Mirren's men that never reported back that was sent to do this. And Mirren said none of them returned. I think he said something along those lines. Let me get this lieutenant out of the way if I can. I'm hoping Aveline can handle those guys over there. If we can get him out of the way, he can stop buffing these guys. It'll be much easier to kill. Archers out here, they're doing work. Guard killed all my men. I thought I gave them the slip, but they found me. You tell Mirren, I never turned on him. I'm not going back until you can walk limp or cruel behind me. <laughs> walk limp or cruel. I, I think I can walk. You got it before Harriman's men could do much damage. His rear guard saw us coming. They fell on us from all sides. Which any professional would have expected. That's him. That's Lord Harriman. Most of my enemies would not stoop this low. Are you working for Conrad Tooley? Perhaps Lady Reinhardt? What have you done that so many people want you dead? You sound Ferelden. Many in the city are. So you should know I'm the one who convinced the Viscount to send aid to Denerim. Many of my fellow noblemen resent that. They want me dead before he sends the money so they can reclaim it for Kirkwall. Will you kill me for this? No. This is not a job I can complete. Thank you, Ferelden. When I learn who sent you, I will be sure to leave you out of any retribution. And that's how Ferelden's roll right there. I don't want to be the one to tell Mirren you did that. Nice. Well, we've got some good points with Aveline and Barrett. Well, it's nice because Aveline doesn't approve of some of the things we do, so it's nice to earn some brownie points when we can. Get her approval high, high enough, and it helps her with her tankiness. Essentially, um, the system here, if I think about it, we can look at it one of these times when we level. Um, it'll show, you know, either an angel's wings or a little devil's pitchfork or something like that. I don't know, but it's like, you know, friendship or rivalry. Then with friendship, they get one particular perk. With rivalry, with rivalry, they actually get another perk. And, uh, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, essentially, um, love on somebody or piss them off intentionally to, to kind of persuade them one way or the other to give them the benefits you want. I, I prefer more of a role-playing route, except with Anders. Anders is a rapist by conversation, so it's it's impossible to speak your mind a lot of the times. He'll tell you to be honest, and then as soon as you are, he goes emo. All right? And um, you can get a lot of disapproval. Like, he will insist that you essentially sleep with him, and if you tell him no, um, you get major rivalry because you didn't let him essentially rape you by conversation. That's really what he is. Um... It, along with all the other um, downside to that dude. And that's that's another thing with him. So to get his friendship and or rivalry up, uh, you know, um, it's impossible just to be straight up with that dude. As far as his perks go, I prefer a friendly 
Anders, but I don't I don't really care for any any part of him as a person. He's seriously confused. His logic is is backwards and hypocritical. Um Okay, now that lady that was talking about that uh sends you after those captains or whatever, um she's supposed to be here in the bar. I I, I just had to come look. That's fine, I need to come out here at night anyway. Alright, let me report to Mirren. So, Gustav limped back here, but refuses to speak one word of what happened. Spit it out. Is Harriman dead or not? He's being hunted for aiding my people. I will not kill him. I think he forgot the rules, Dog Lord. Once you take the job, you do the job. You don't decide if it's right. I'll take care of this myself. Don't try hitting me up for coin again. That door is closed. No, wasn't going to. Well, at least we got our points back from Aveline. <laughs> for talking to him in the first place. Not straight up with him. I'm kind of trying to spur a fight with that guy. So I wouldn't mind killing him and his men too. Do everybody a favor because... Uh, you know, he would he would claim to be essentially neutral. We're just the sword. You know, they decide who they want to kill. We're just the sword that does it. But uh, no, no, I see a little more malice there than just, uh, you know, an uncommittal neutral party. I'm I'm not buying it. And I think he's a bit of a douche. So we will uh, we'll deal with him accordingly. And I did I didn't mind really leaving and coming back anyway. I wanted to uh, see if we can't spawn a few more mobs here. Now, I, I'm 99% sure one should spawn over here. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Um, like I say, maybe the solution is just to uh, leave the area and come back type of thing. Yeah, there should be one down here, too. Somewhere along here. Is that? Oh, there we go. All right. Good deal. Go ahead and draw him out a bit. At some point, I would like to not lean at all on even having to um, halt my party. Like it's all just to do our thing, but uh, we don't have a lot of combos set up. I mean, we can wipe out enemies decently fast right now, but um, there's a point where this can get even faster. And it's going to need to be. We're going to need to wipe parties, uh, wipe enemies out a whole lot faster at a certain point. Especially when we start dealing with some real mobs. These are bad, but it definitely gets worse in the game, so. For right now, kiting them out a little bit and bringing them into more of a, a choke point, you know, where we can deal with them uh, maybe only 10 at a time instead of 20 at a time type of thing. <laughs> Gotta get these archers out of here. Archers aren't as bad as Inquisition, though. I will, I will say that. Nothing's as bad as Archers in Inquisition, I don't think. There are uh, some passives and things that will allow Aveline to generate even more threat. You'll see me drop some points into her willpower and stuff. I'm going to want her to have enough stamina to keep all of her passives going and still have enough stamina left over where she can drop off, oh, say taunt, you know, I mean, taunt is, is basically her, her go-to skill, right? But to be able to throw some things in there to either capitalize on some cross-class combos or set up for some cross-class combos. She has the ability to occasionally stagger people, right? She also has the ability to um, capitalize on a cross-class combo uh, against, I think, enemies that are disoriented, which is uh, something that I can produce, or Varric. One advantage to having a warrior as a main character is um, instead of playing the rogue, you bring Varric along as your rogue. Um, or perhaps um, a, a, another rogue, you know, that I won't mention at the moment, but uh, who will eventually join us, right? But either way, um, and they they can be set up to automatically um, use those abilities which 
uh, create combo effects, you know, to disorient uh, enemies and um, so on and so forth. So, you know, there is that advantage. Um, a lot of times playing the main character, you know, you'd be fighting and doing your thing and maybe pick abilities um, to set up combos or ex or execute combos, but then you have to recognize when enemies are staggered or when enemies are brittle or whatever. Some of it's obvious because you can actually see by their looks, you know, the animation, but uh, other times may actually even turn it on to where um, you'll see little floating words over their heads and it'll, it'll tell you. Staggered, disoriented, brittle, um, paralyzed, petrified, you know, all that kind of stuff. As it is, I'm already uh, not real comfortable with my tactics. I mean, they're working okay. I mean, we're getting by, but um, build themselves is possible. I may, I may actually go in with uh, a handful of maker size if I get a nice extra fat wad of cash that uh, I don't need for things like tomes and stuff. I may go in and um, respect from scratch at some point because, like I said, I'm a little rusty. Um, I remember coming up with whole party builds both for rogue and warrior they were different there it is peer pressure all right that's what we were looking for that final mob and then we'll go hit their home base and th this one's nasty this one's just absolutely brutal um not as bad as the, as the high town one this is i guess second the high town would probably be the hardest in my opinion this would be second uh the one in low town not so bad that that was just a simple ambush in a small room and we got through through that with not much problem but um, I remember coming up with a good um, party build where everybody was playing off everybody else and it worked really well. It's easier to set that up as a warrior, but the two-handed warrior I like to play, um, which, you know, towards the end of the game, you're an absolute beast, but it develops a little a little slower than the rogue. The rogue tends to be um, uh, well-powered earlier in the game, in my opinion, than the two-handed warrior. Especially with Nightmare Active, because there's a lot of the uh, skills that are pretty much taken out of the mix that you can't use. I still use cleave, but like cleave, uh, what is it, whirlwind, mighty blow, all those are all friendly fire, and they'll wipe your party instantly. You'll kill everyone in your party in one shot sometimes, and so uh, it's not advisable. And so I, you know, my my warrior build relies mostly on basic attacks, mostly, and a lot of speed and um, a good mix of um, abilities and passives and so on and so forth, and then course you know utilizing cross-class combos from the rest of your party and stuff and there are even some ways where you can incorporate basic attacks triggering some combos like the ability to uh stagger an enemy with just a basic attack and then any enemy that's staggered you have your whole party set up to capitalize on that you know any any ability they have that can do extra damage to a staggered enemy all right you assign them in their tactics to use that only when an enemy is staggered and so if you're running around hitting everything with a high critical chance and all your criticals have a chance to stagger, for example, well, then your whole party is, is geared to capitalize on that because they have a skill set aside specifically for that. Okay, now this guy, he's a blood mage, I guess, essentially. His name's Leech, and what he does is he steals your health and he does major damage while he's doing it. So it helps keep him alive, and um, it's an AoE thing, so it can essentially wipe your party. It's good to keep your mages... And rogues um, or whoever set to uh, ranged, because if they get up in his face, they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get annihilated. And he can spam it. See, it's it's really unfair. I call this one BS. This particular um, deal right here. Maybe it's designed for higher level characters. There's some things we could have in place. Um, if my if my mage just had petrify right now. We are doing a lot of this without getting some other um, party members who are good for certain things and specialize in certain things. Um, we don't have them here yet. We just we're just running with the basic basic squad. In fact, we probably could have. We could have gone up into the mountain to deliver that thing for Flemeth. Gotten a party member there. We could uh, be doing Anders' side quest right now to have an extra mage if we wanted. Haven't done that yet either. <laughs> Talking smack. Right, I'm almost, I'm almost dead here. Okay, that's better. 
Well, I'd like to use stealth a little more often. That'd be awesome. Just a little bit. A long cooldown on that. Yeah, and see the the just this unlimited. Now imagine if we hadn't gotten that mage out of there, and he was just running around doing his AOE blood sucking thing, his little vampire move. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm out of health, and I got both these archers on me, and I have no way to shed the hate. And this is where, when I have managed the hate for my character very well, um, run into problems because I have Aveline set up to um, basically tank for the mages. Yeah, I bled out. Fight's over and I bleed out. Okay, whatever. That's not embarrassing at all. I can't tell, Aveline. I sure appeared to be on the ground there knocked out while you were here. That's certainly how it seemed. All right, whatever. This dude does drop a unique item, though. All right, well, okay, we got through with that. That's that's a relief. There's a, a few key points in the game where I'm, I'm almost nervous going in. I'm like, really? I, I know this is going to be just nasty. Sometimes the stars have to line up in just the right way, or else uh, <laughs> some of these battles are just damn near impossible. It, it will test you. This game is awesome. It will test every facet of your build. Certain... Certain mobs you'll face and you don't have any problem at all, and then other times you come in and you just get wiped almost automatically, and it's like, wow, what what's the weakness there? And you have to figure it out. Figure out what your weakness is and then compensate for it somewhere. Alright, so we got that last guy out of there and, and that's done. Alright, so the, the streets are clear and what we need to do is remember to turn this in. If you like I say, if you turn these in one at a time, you'll get more gold than if you turn them in all at once. Like, I think I can turn in two of these and get three gold. But if I turn them in one at a time, I get two gold. So, you know, I can get four or three. I can get six or five. You know, that type of thing. But, uh, yeah, we'll turn this in and we'll eventually make it to Hightown. Um, a lot of... In fact, I think there's three companions whose personal quest to recruit them. Which is essentially, you know, you meet somebody... You have to do a, a really big nasty favor for them to recruit them, and then once they're in the party, I believe later on they'll all have their own version of another companion, you know, quest or, you know, personal related stuff. I think in each act, actually, I think they all have their own thing to do in Act 1, 2, and 3. In Act 1, of course, we recruit them. In Act 2, uh, we'll carry that on and uh, get to know them better type of thing, gain their... Gain their um, Loyalty or whatever, and then in Act Three it'll be you know it'll it'll give them closure essentially. I think that's basically how it's all written out. Okay, now we pissed Mirren off, and yeah, there he is. Okay, now this is bad. Um, is that that last fight wasn't bad enough? There's a way to there's a way to make this really manageable. There you are. I don't let anyone who cross me get this big in this town. Honor, lads. This is just another another day at work for you, huh, asshole? All right, so to make this um, much more manageable, I'm going to go ahead and just move the whole party down here. Let let anyone who wants to chase me, chase me. That's fine. But um, it's not so much the number of enemies that mob you from all directions, but it's their health. It's like all of his archers, if I remember right, are all, you know, all have the longer health bar. He doesn't have too many of those followers with the little tiny health bar. There may be a couple in there, but most of them are going to take a minute to kill, and the whole time those archers are just destroying you. His archers are effective. But all these guys in general should have, yeah, see, they all have that meat. In, there we go. That's his archers. And look, it takes an extra four or five hits to kill him. You can't just two-shot him. Well, that was a waste of explosive strength. But, uh. Right, there we go now. Mirren. Mirren one shotted Bethany. Yeah. That's another thing about assassins is. 
Abilene will do her taunting thing. She'll do all that, and she'll draw that a lot. And later on, um, she'll draw that basically all the time. But uh, right now, if she doesn't generate 100% of the hate right off the top, and those assassins get their eyes on your mages. Remember, the strength of an attack determines where hate is transferred. Like, um, essentially your mages, in my, like my rogue, can taunt just as well as a warrior just by pulling off a really, really um, tasty, brutal attack. Like, say if I one-shot a boss with an assassination, just about everyone on the field is going to look at me. Say, oh crap, and I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm the target, you know, with the biggest threat. And so, there you go. Um, the one way to manage that is with stealth. You know, if they all turn on you instantly, hit stealth, and they all, all turn away. And that split second that they're, you know, refocusing their attention, your, your teammates can get in some, uh, you know, some attacks of their own. But, uh, all right, there we go. But all those guys, like I said, they all had the medium health bars, and so you can't take them down real fast. And if you just stay right here in this courtyard where Mirren faces you, they're they're circling you, and it can be pretty nasty. And at this stage in the game, even if Aveline is able to draw all the hate just right off the top, get a taunt and get everyone's attention, um, all those archers shooting at her at the same time, she's going to get essentially two shot by the whole mob, and then you're really screwed. Because you have nobody to keep anybody off of yourself or the mages or anything else. So, anyway. Yeah, I do like to move around on that one a little bit. I have uh, not had great success trying that any other way. Alright, so these streets are clear. Free of thugs. There's that lady. Alright, sweet. The suspicious lady. That's... Okay, but that's not active. I don't I don't know what we need to do first to trigger that, but she's the one we'll talk to, and then we can go deal with those two captains down at the docks. We'll need to return to the docks a couple more times anyway for various things, so not a biggie. But uh, we'll go turn in the good news that we cleared the the docks of thugs. You know, actually, I think you get more XP turning these in one at a time, too. Like, maybe 1,500 as opposed to 1,000 or 1,200 or something. I, I think so. Right, so this is a good deal all the way around. It's just a matter of remembering to come back each time you clear out an area. Alright, so let everyone get free heals. Something that's good for. Don't have to spend health kits. Sell them instead, right? And I think... Uh, I think our next stop, we're going to go ahead and fulfill our promise to Flemeth, and then we'll start working on getting some companions, right? And this is this is one of my favorite parts of the game right here, actually, we're leading into, right? We'll get on that in the next one, right? Thanks for watching. Want to subscribe? Click that button over my head. For more Dragon Age 2, click that image in the middle, and I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye.